Hello and welcome. In an earlier video, I had introduced InForever. Now, InForever is the only planning and forecasting template visual available in Power BI. Uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best visuals available for planning and forecasting. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how you would create a planning template. So let's get started. Now, this is what I'm talking about here. Um, th this is a Power BI, a Power BI report in the service where I have, uh, let, let's say I am the VP of uh, sales and I've been given some goals or targets by my upper management. And this target is at the business unit level. So I have some targets here in this visual. So uh, this gray bars are the targets provided by my upper management. So I want to break down this target uh, as a VP of sales, let's say I want the I want to break down this target by how much of my revenue is going to come from existing customers and how much from new customers. So I need to create a template where I am <clears throat> entering these numbers at the business unit level and then it spreads down to the salesperson level. Uh, so here I have this template and for example, for this um, uh, Verdant Haven business unit, I, I, am, um, uh, I am forecasting uh, that 96 million will come from existing customer sales and the remaining 10 million from new customer sales, which you can see here, which adds up to 106. But let's say as I'm planning, I change uh, my numbers. Let's say I say new customers will be 11 million. So this I am doing it using the InfoRiver visual and it's going to write back, in my case, to a SQL server. And once it's write, writes back, uh, I'm using direct query uh, to update the stop visual here. And you see uh, my goal or uh, forecast goes up to 107 million. So I'm doing this on the fly. And as I'm changing my numbers, it's also spreading down to my uh, salesperson level. And I'm going to show, show how uh, I, I configured InfoRiver to achieve this. Okay, let's start with this in Power BI Desktop. All right, I've got the InfoRiver visual already installed. Um, so I'm gonna select that. And then I am going to do this forecasting at the year level, right? So uh, first thing I wanna do is uh, bring in year into this visual. So uh, I filter down this uh, page to 2023. Um, I understand we are in 2024, but um, you know my data is 2023. So let's assume we are forecasting for 2023. Okay, so having said that next, uh, I wanna do it at the business unit uh, level, but I also want the business unit ID because when I write back, I want the ID in there. So I'm selecting business unit ID and the business unit name for display. Uh, and then I wanna spread it down to the salesperson level. So I'm gonna select the salesperson ID as well. Um, and I'm gonna move business unit to the rows. So there you have it. This is um, all the rows I need and the data itself. Now I want to see, as I'm building this visual, I want to see my sales, okay? Uh, and then um, I also want to see what the goals was provided by my upper management. So I have already got this. I've got 80% um, of the CEO goal and 20%. So I want to, uh, I want to make, so the, I'm doing the 80 and 20% because I want 80% of the targets set by the upper management to come from existing customers or I want to default those values, 80% um, to the existing customers and 20% to the new customers. Uh, now, th this is my uh, way of doing things and there's multiple ways of doing this as well, all right? Uh, so now I have um, all the uh, data elements that we need. So let's go ahead and configure the visual uh, in forever visual okay so now in this visual the first thing i want to do is i want to just keep the um, uh, change the layout maybe let's say i want oh let, actually let's go to manage columns and i want I, I don't want to see here because i know which year i am forecasting for i don't need the business unit id salesperson id either in the visual Although remember, I have, this is just the visual layer, although these fields are captured and this data will be saved when you write back at the salesperson ID, uh, including the business unit ID. But when I want the end users to interact with this, I do not want them to see uh, the salesperson ID because um, you know that, that's not necessary for them. All right, so let's uh, start with this. Um, and uh, okay, now I have these fields. Next, let's say I want to create input values now. Um, so the 
uh, input values is where the end users actually enter their numbers. So I can do data input number and then here is where I'm going to use these two columns that I added. So I can pre-fill it with some numbers so that when uh, when the end user interacts with uh, with this visual, there's already some data and they can manipulate it. Right, so uh, I'm uh, selecting 80% of the CEO goal, and then it asks the prompt as I selected to make sure that I have the necessary license. Okay, so the, the next thing is uh, the data element. I can uh, configure this. I'm going to call this existing customer goal, uh, and then other things we can do min and max value and so forth. But right now, and there's also a default value, but uh, I don't need any of those, so I'm going to leave that. Next, I want to add another input element. This time I want to copy from the 20% of the CEO goal and call this new customer goal. Okay. Now I've got two columns and then let's say I want this to be, I can just drag it over if I want to move the columns around how it displays. Um, okay, so now we have all the data that we need. Uh, the next thing I want to do is maybe uh, change the header. So I can double click it, um, resize it and uh, let's let me call it um, existing and new customer planning template. Okay, and then I can highlight this, go um, resize it, bold color, all those things. Okay, um, and there are a few other formatting things I would like to show. Is let's say if I go to canvas, um, I can choose dark background or light background, and within that I can choose the text color. Um, to whatever I want. Let's say I want to pick uh, a different uh, color. I can go in here, enter the hexadecimal code as well. Uh, let's say I pick something like that. And header text, I can pick a different color. And I'm picking contrasting color just to show you uh, how it will look. Now, we can also uh, use this column style to uh, to change the display of uh, the reading versus editing view and for the different uh, different columns, right? So native measures are measures that um, that comes from the model. So maybe I'll make those dark. So these are the native ones which comes from the model, and these two are the data input. So I, maybe I want to make those hatched. So you can see the see the difference which one is editable, which one is um, non-editable. Uh, also, this is the editing view. This is my view as I'm editing this in Power BI Desktop. So if you want this, want a similar contrast in the reading view, this is when the end user uses this in the service, we can uh, configure that as well. And um, I can configure these um, individual columns as well, the layout as well. So if I go to home, there's multiple options for layout, outline, table, stepped, and so forth. So in my case, I'll leave it at hierarchy. Um, and then also I could go to export and do selected columns and I can select individual columns and change the formatting on these. So let's say I want just this one to be, uh, so my business unit names are uh, much bigger, I can do that. Uh, also individual rows, I can select a particular rows. I want the header to be more prominent, I can do that. Also I can select an individual cell a header cell and change that as well. So let's say I want to change this to sales millions, something like that. I could do that, okay? Um, okay, so in, in my scenario, what I did was I do not want to show the header or uh, maybe I can say um, disable grand total. So if I don't want to show the totals, I have that option. And in my scenario, what I did was I did not want to show the sales and the 80 and the 20% because this, uh, this is available in the other visuals in my page. And 80 and 20%, uh, these two fields, I use them to populate these existing and new customers initially, right? So that was a way for me to um, pre-populate these uh, two columns. So the end user doesn't start with the blank slate. So I really don't want to show that, so I can disable that as well, okay? So now uh, I have, uh, the visual kind of where I need it to, although I know the colors are kind of uh, not the best, but let's say, okay, I got this, I can resize them. Now, what I can do is I need to do is save this. I need to write back. So to write back, I go into settings. And now once I go into settings, the, this is one of the key features, uh, write back type. Um, long and wide, we won't get into, but I think long is, um, 
uh, is the is the way to go. Uh, well, uh, it it goes more into technical how database is designed, but uh, I would say long is pre predominantly the way you want to go. And then if you want to lo log the changes, right? So every time a change is made, you want to keep the history of it. Then you go long with changes, which is what I choose most of the time. And then if I want to, uh, if I don't want to add the totals or the subtotals into my write back, because I can pretty much use those, I can calculate that in uh, in my Power BI desktop as long as I have the lowest level breakdown. So I can um, go into filters, custom filters, and say exclude totals and subtotals. And then I do not get the like I said, the totals and subtotals saved into my database. Uh, next thing is data, all right? When I write back into the database, I really don't need uh, sales or 80 or 20% written. I just want the what the user enters, the data inputs to be written back to my uh, database. And uh, enable write, uh, automatic write back is as the user changes uh, the numbers, it writes back within a few uh, second, so which we can configure here how how long the delay should be. Um, so if we want that feature, we can enable it. If not, the user has to can make changes in all the cells, and they can uh, click on right back here. So uh, it's uh, so those are the two options. I typically, uh, especially if I enable uh, log with changes. So I know that I have the history. I like to enable automatic write back because the typical tendency of the user is to make a change and forget to click on write back. So I like I like that option, but like as they make the changes, it's saved. Um, and then the last part is uh, the destination. Where do you want to save this? So when I click on add destination here, it's going to open uh, up a browser where I can configure my destination. And um, you'll see since I uh, I selected long with changes, I get only options of uh, of the uh, of databases which can keep track of changes. If I had said I do not need the changes or history, uh, then my, I would have gotten options of uh, like a data uh, fabric lake house and other file systems where uh, it, it it can it overwrites the file so it doesn't store history. So those options would be available. Uh, but if we want to store history, then only the database options shows up in this uh, destination. So you, I can go ahead and configure my Azure SQL source. It's going to ask the typical, you know, server username, password, and so forth. Okay, so once I've configured that, now I am ready. Um, you know what? I don't like these colors that I picked. So let me go to home and change these colors. Okay, I just made them white, so just for the video, so it's easier to see. So now I have uh, the uh, the write back done. So next thing I want to do is just uh, set up the base value. So I, I can click on write back, and it goes ahead and uh, finishes the write back. Uh, once that's done, uh, we'll, we'll what we can do is we can um, connect. Uh, we can go see logs and stuff, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but um, we can connect, uh, do a direct query to this table that uh, it writes back to um, and get the data back. And uh, I'll show that shortly. Now, another uh, thing uh, to note here is you can also create uh, scenarios. So this is a base scenario. And then let's say you have uh, LE or so forth. You can create multiple scenarios um, and save those as well. Now here you go, I've created a direct query to that uh, table where I save the write back data, the plan data. So you'll notice, like I said, we capture data at the business unit level and uh, salesperson. And then these are the columns that we created existing customer uh, and new customer. Um, so it's this, this is what, uh, when we say long, this is how it captures. Every value is captured as a row. And then we get the actual value. It also stores the previous value. So this is where you say along with changes, then it captures your previous value, maintains the history. And then there is also a column called is latest. So when you say pick is latest equals one, that's your latest value for that row of data. So we can capture this value, bring it back into your Power BI desktop and uh, show the report, create the measures and show this report where I am um, summing up the existing and the new customer goal to get this information here for each of the different business units. And then, um, like I said, we can capture this at the salesperson level as well. So as I expand the business unit, I can see the same goal information broken down or uh, spread out 
to the salesperson level. So as I make changes in my forecast, it is spread to the salesperson as well. For example, let's say um, uh, for this uh, Verdant Haven, we have uh, Rajesh Kumar has 32 million. So if I change my existing customer to let's say 100 million, um, let's see what happens. Now, as you can see, uh, the numbers changed. Um, uh, so, so this is uh, like the basic step-by-step -step introduction to InfoRiver. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, obvious.com.